Well, here's an interesting topic that we haven't covered yet, and that is ad campaigns from General Motors in the 1980s. And I picked GM because Ford and Chrysler didn't have quite as many jingles associated with their ad campaigns as GM did. Ford did have some that we'll get to in a minute. Chrysler really had a lot of ads where Lee Iacocca was talking more than any jingle. In any case, this is a video that's going to talk about the top three best and worst ads from General Motors during this time period. And we'll start with the worst ads. Now, obviously, this is very subjective, but how would I define worst? Well, if the ad is just super funky or the tune is more of an earworm than something that is overly catchy, I've put it into the worst column. And if it's got kind of a catchy tune that resonates with the potential customer base and what the brand was all about, I've said it's one of the best. So let's go take a look at some of these ad campaigns and start with the worst three. We'll begin with the Chevrolet division, which has, shall we say, a few on this list. And we'll begin with the ad for the then new for 1984 Chevrolet Corvette. See what you think of this ad and its very strange, overly sci-fi, Star Wars, I don't know what you'd call it, theme to it. Let's take a look. It began as genius and grew to be legend and has become at long last the most advanced production car on the planet. Chevrolet Corvette like never before. Never before. A Corvette superb in its engineering and technology and defiant in its performance. You never felt anything like this before. Feel the performance of the world's first computer-activated manual transmission. Never before. A Corvette with never before available unidirectional turbine fin wheels and tires individually engineered for all four corners. Crystal display. 14 separate instrument readouts, English or metric, all updated 16 times every operating second. You've never heard anything like this before. An available Delco Bose stereo with four never before speakers, separately engineered for sound that's out of this world. Never before. The most advanced production car on the planet is now called Corvette. Chevrolet is taking charge. Well, that was certainly interesting. I'm not quite sure what the driver was wearing throughout that whole video. And if you go back and look at the video during the time period that they're talking about the Delco Bose stereo system, take a look at the drummer. He looks like he belongs in KISS. It's just a uh, overall strange video for the 1984 Corvette. I guess they wanted it to come across as high tech, although interestingly, the manual transmission they discuss in the ad really was a flop. It was the Doug Nash 4 plus 3 manual transmission, the subject of perhaps another video for us. And the liquid crystal displays that they talk about were changed after one year to a display with more high resolution. In any case, let's take a look at this next ad from the Chevrolet division that is somewhat catchy but also more of an earworm than a pleasant jingle. Let's take a listen. Room for five, front wheel drive, and an EPA estimate of 24 miles a gallon. It's not only the first Chevy of the 80s, it's a whole new kind of compact car. Over the next few weeks, we're going to demonstrate all kinds of things the Chevy Citation can do. Well, if that ad isn't an earworm, I don't know what is. It's kind of a catchy tune, but overly dramatic and overdone. 
And I do suppose that the ad campaign worked, though, because Chevrolet did end up selling 800,000 citations in the 1980 model year alone. Yes, I did say that correctly, 800,000 vehicles. And that compares to today, the top-selling vehicles like the F-150 sell somewhere around 450,000 units per year. So it's almost double what the top-selling car in the U.S. sells in 2022. In any case, that jingle is just one that I guess proves a little bit irksome for me, but perhaps it was effective. Unfortunately, the car would also go on to become the most recalled car in U.S. vehicle history to that point, surpassing the Aspen Velari as the most recalled car. And I believe it would remain the most recalled car in U.S. history until the Ford recalls of the late 90s and early 2000s. Let's now flip to Cadillac, GM's high price division, for this last worst ad of the 1980s. All out is the only way you go. And it earns you the rewards of success. Naturally, that includes the car you drive. Distinctive. Elegant. Seville goes all out to achieve your high goals for luxury travel. Drive the 1985 Seville. The car for those who, like you, choose to go first class all the way. Well, this ad for the 1985 Seville makes the list because it's not quite clear to me what best of all it's a Cadillac means. It's not something that is quite evident and doesn't really speak to the product or its value proposition. Just best of all, it's a Cadillac. And the jingle isn't all that great. Hence, it made the list. Let's now flip to some better ad campaigns and look at some of the best ads of the 1980s from GM Division, starting with Buick. It's the statement you make as you travel through life. Distinctive, decidedly you. The great American world belongs. That's a particularly catchy jingle and one that really embodied this transition Buick was going through in the late 1980s under new divisional leadership. You'll notice that Buick kind of dropped away and eschewed its T-type vehicles for a number of years and got back to being more of the great American road car. And that was what that jingle really embodied. And it helped propel Buick to some great sales success in the late 80s and early 1990s, particularly as it began to introduce the new LeSabre in the early 90s as well as the Park Avenue. Let's now take a look at a different Cadillac jingle that makes the best list, and it's not best of all. It's a Cadillac, but it's something different. I don't know about you, but I thought that was a particularly catchy tune for Cadillac, and I think it also helped Cadillac get back some of its mojo in the late 80s after Lincoln had poked fun of it for having lookalike cars with Buick and Oldsmobile. 
And by this time in the late 80s, Cadillac had really tried to revamp and give facelifts to some of its lineup that customers may have thought were a bit of a lookalike car with the Olds and Buick. The DeVilles had new rear tail fins as well as front end. The 86 Eldorado and Seville had been revised to have a bit more Cadillac flair as well. And you notice even that Cadillac closed out the ad with the Brome driving at the TV screen, which is something they really didn't advertise for a number of years in the mid-80s. But after Lincoln poked fun of them, they seemed to throw some advertising weight behind it yet again. And it would be the longest running car in Cadillac's lineup, I believe, until that point, running from the 1977 all the way through to the 1992 model year. Let's close out this best worst with what I believe is the best General Motors ad campaign of the 1980s. It comes from the excitement division. that's certainly a catchy tune and a good one at that and i think it really helped propel pontiac sales in this mid to late 80s as well as early 90s time frame when the division was riding high and selling a lot of vehicles pontiac was generating almost hit after hit after hit during this time period for i would say about a 15 year streak of excellent styled cars that were well marketed and hit the mark in terms of price point, content, style, features. It's really sad that Pontiac Division couldn't make it through the GM bankruptcy in the late 2000s because I think a lot of us, myself included, really missed the brand and what it stood for. But this was Pontiac at its zenith and great marketing campaign that drove great sales of vehicles. Hope you enjoyed this best and worst ad campaigns of the 1980s GM vehicles. Let me know if you did and if you'd like to see more of these types of videos. Thanks again for watching. Till next time, take care.